Hey, what's up, guys? So, um, here in recent events, I've noticed several people reaching out to me on Facebook or Instagram or texting me or whatever the case may be, um, kind of asking me about some simple fundamentals of shooting. They they might have their FOID card, they might have a gun, uh, but they're very inexperienced with it, and they don't really know or they don't feel confident that they could defend themselves with it if needed so um i thought just to kind of you know answer a bunch of questions all at once and just send out one video that maybe i would kind of go over um basic safety stuff with a firearm with a handgun and fundamentals of how to shoot how to hold the gun sight picture um trigger control different things like that so i'll start out number one just with this baseline safety rules right so um i have a gun it has a magazine in it i'm going to take the magazine out it has bullets in it i'm never going to point this gun at anything that i don't intend to shoot right um that's like rule number one don't point the gun at anything you don't intend to shoot now Rule number two, which is actually the most broken rule that I've ever seen, is keep your finger off the trigger until you have a correct sight picture and you know that you want to shoot that target, then you bring your trigger finger down and onto the trigger. Any other time that you're walking around, talking, whatever, you have a gun in your hand, whatever the case may be, if you're out at the range, talking to your buddies, whatever, this finger stays right here in the injection port, right there, all at all times. It's a perfect resting place for it. Anywhere up on, up high on this gun where people around you can see that your trigger finger is away from the trigger guard, that's where you want to rest your finger at all times. That should be a natural occurrence. As soon as you grab a handgun, your hand, your, your trigger finger should go way up high. It should just naturally do that. I pick up a power drill and I grab a power drill and I put my finger way up high on it. It's just a subconscious thing that I do. It's, it's just, you should get into that habit to always keep your finger up high on the pistol and never inside of the trigger guard, ever. Don't ever do that until you know you're ready to pull that trigger you're ready to shoot that gun right so um the other thing is know your target and know what's beyond it and this is super important especially in home defense situations um if you haven't already and you have a gun in your house and you plan on using that gun for self-defense for home defense or whatever the case may be you need to scope your house out right now ahead of time way ahead of time before any situation occurs you need to scope your house out and you need to figure out okay what's the most likely point that I will make contact with somebody who is a threat that I need to use lethal force against what's the most likely point in this house that I will make contact with them number one you need to know okay a do you have kids if you have kids you need to obviously know where their room is at and you need to make a game plan as to getting to them and bringing them back to your room or finding a place in the house where everybody knows to meet so that everybody can be in the same area during a lethal encounter with a firearm. That way you don't have, you're not, you know, um, my house right now, I have our bedroom and then I have a hallway and at the end of the hallway is another bedroom where people sleep. So I have to take that into consideration that if I just open my bedroom door and I hear somebody in the house, I open my bedroom door, they're staying in the hallway, I have to be aware that I'm going to shoot him and I have to assume that that bullet is either going to hit him and go through him and go into that bedroom or I'm going to miss him and the bullet is going to zip right through the house, through the bedroom, and be a danger to the people who are in that bedroom. So it's things that you have to consider and think about ahead of time so that you're not, you know, 
you're not trying to make those decisions or think about those things when seconds count and you actually need to act on a violent intruder. You see what I'm saying? So scope your house out ahead of time. And not only that, but make a game plan as to what will happen if I need to do X, Y, and Z, right? So know your target and know what's beyond it. Know where that bullet's gonna go and the potential that that bullet has to hurt other people that you don't wanna hurt. Nine times out of 10 in a shooting, you're gonna have more people that you don't wanna shoot than people than you, that you do wanna shoot. So you have to be aware of that and you have to be conscious of, if I send this you know, supersonic projectile down the hallway, is it gonna hit any of my kids? Is it gonna hit somebody in the next room? whatever the case may be, right? So you have to be aware of that stuff ahead of time so that you've made the decisions as to where you could shoot, where you can't shoot, um, you know, stuff like that. So you've got to know that stuff ahead of time. Um, and really, that's, that's about it. Keep your finger off the trigger. Know where your muzzle's at at all times. Um, and know your target and what's beyond it. So anyway, that's safety, right? always keep your finger out of the trigger well if i bring you out to my range to help you shoot whatever else i've i've been flagged by a lot of muzzles i have um and that's okay you know it's it's not acceptable but it's okay i understand you know but you have to keep your finger off the trigger you have to consciously be aware of everything you're doing when you're shooting and everything you're doing when you're not shooting while you still have a gun in your hands. You have to be self-aware of what you're doing, okay? So that's safety. We'll get that out of the way right off the bat. So number two is how to properly grip a pistol. Now, a lot of people don't really understand how to grip a pistol. Um, they, you know, they the only really real references that they have is off the movies or off of, you know, something that Uncle Jim told them or Uncle Bob told them or whatever else, right? And they don't actually consider the physics that takes place when you pull the trigger and launch a bullet out of this gun. So the proper way to grip a pistol, this is called the beaver tail, right? So everybody calls it. It's called the beaver tail. That's what I call it anyway. It's what I've always heard it called. When this gun goes off, all of this pressure explodes right here. The bullet goes out the end of the gun and all of that kinetic energy pushes this slide back, right? So when all of that's taking place right here, real high in the gun, it only makes sense that you want to have your grip, your strength behind the highest part of the gun. If I could hold the gun like this and shoot it, it would manage the recoil a lot better than holding the gun like this. But obviously I can't do that because the slide has to move, right? So the alternative is get as high in that beaver tail as possible. Now I've heard a lot of people complain about they're getting too high and the slide is coming back and it's actually cutting their hand right here. They'll have like scars and scrapes and cuts and they'll bleed everywhere and everything else. It's called slide bite. If that's the case, um, you're too high, right? So everything about the grip of a pistol is a balance. It's all about pressure and contact points in order to manage an explosion because technically that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to manage an explosion that goes off in your hands, right? So you get as high as you can without being in danger of this slide coming back and biting the top of your hand up here. Usually most guns have a really nice beaver tail on them where it's really hard to get that high. But some of the older pistols, some of the other models that are kind of like low end, the beaver tail is kind of, it's, it's not as pronounced. So you can get your hand a little bit too high, uh, especially with smaller guns. And that slide will zip back and forth and it doesn't care if your hand's in the way. It's gonna tear all of this and cut you and make you bleed and everything else. So you wanna get as high as you can without, you know, um, without 
being in the way of this slide as it zips back and forth, right? So as high as you can. These fingers right here wrap around the pistol. Your thumb rests right here. Now every single gun, every modern, you know, polymer, striker fired, whatever, every pistol has a slide release right here. Or if I push that down, it pushes the slide back, right? So that is actually a, it's not necessarily a point where you want to rest your thumb on it, but it's a good indicator as to where your thumb should be. So my thumb should actually be right at the bottom, right here of the slide release, not on top of it. If it's on top of it, when you run out of ammo, you'll shoot and your slide will just zip right back into place and you won't get what's called slide lock like that, right? Because you're actually pushing, you're holding the button down so there's nothing in the way to catch whenever it runs out of ammo. So you want to sit right below that slide lock or that slide release right there, okay? That's your grip right there. As high as possible here, wrap your fingers around as deep, as deep in here as you can You'll feel the tension kind of like lock the gun into place with your with your shooting hand, your strong hand. And then this thumb rides right here below the slide lock. Now, this is the biggest problem that I have with people is they don't know what to do with their support hands. I've seen several people hold the gun like this. I've seen several people, um, I've seen them do all kinds of funky stuff. So, but but basically what you, what this hand is for is to put pressure inward a lot of people will grab a gun and they'll squeeze the hell out of it and try to manage the recoil by squeezing harder this way right clamping down on it this way but instead what's more effective is to put pressure on both sides of the gun going inwards so basically you lock the gun into place with your strong hand right proper grip here and then all of this empty space needs to be filled the reason why it needs to be filled is because we call it the path of least resistance basically what takes place is there's an explosion that happens in this gun and all of that kinetic energy has to go somewhere right it has to escape somewhere so it's going to find what's called the path of least resistance or the weakest point in your grip, right? So you're, this explosion goes off. So in other words, let, let me think of it this way. So if I held this gun one-handed and I shot this gun one-handed with all of this space open right here, I have all this resistance on this side of the gun, but I have no resistance on this side of the gun. This is my weakest point in the grip. Therefore, this is it's going to take the past the path of least resistance so if i shoot my gun one hand like this the gun is going to recoil this way whereas if i'm left-handed i hold the gun i shoot the gun it's going to recoil this way because it's going to escape out of the weakest point in my grip which is what is left open right here so the whole point of your grip is to try to cover all bases of the pistol in order to do that once you have a solid grip with your strong hand your shooting hand you have your support hand now what i usually tell people is hold your hand out like i'm going to shake your hand your your off hand not not the hand that you would normally use to shake somebody's hand but your off hand hold your hand out and they'll go like this i said okay exactly so that right there if you were to shake my hand instead fit it right here and what you'll find is you'll find that the knuckles on this thumb and the knuckles on this thumb meet and kind of join together once that happens you're locked into place up here wrap your fingers around and now push your thumbs forward to complete the grip right so now what I have if you look at my hands I have tension and I have strength and control over every part of this grip. So if I do it right, 
and I put tension in the right spots of this handgun, there's no quote unquote weak points in my grip. So therefore, when this explosion takes place, it's equally distributed through my hands and really the only place that it has to disperse that energy is through the slide, right? So that's your proper grip. Hand forward like I'm gonna shake your hand, fit it right into place. My knuckles touch each other right here. And I'm gonna fold my fingers over and I'm gonna put my thumbs forward. That is a proper grip. High on beaver tail, tight in the pocket of my knuckles back here on the grip, fill in the gaps, wrap around to create more tension, more torque here on top of each other, and then push my thumbs forward. Now, that's the baseline of your grip. Now there's little tidbits of tension spots that you need to pay attention to as well. So once you have a proper grip, what you're trying to do is you're trying to hold the gun down and you're trying to push the gun. You're basically trying to smash the gun from the right side and the left side inward, not the front side to the back side, not, you know, not pinching it like this here. You're trying to pinch it like this here, right? So if I have a strong foundation, proper grip in order to control the gun from going up what I have is I have my thumb here which if you look right here on my gun you see this knurling that's put right here that's put there for a tent for a reason and it's for tension so when I have a proper grip I put my thumb right there on that knurling and what I'm doing with my thumb here is I'm actually pulling the gun downward and putting pressure and tension right here on this spot of the gun, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm pulling it down as it's trying to recoil up. So I'm mitigating that recoil with this thumb. I'm also doing the same thing on this side with my grip down here. So I have my fingers that have been wrapped around, right? Now my fingers that have been wrapped around. Now, if the gun's trying to go like this, what would be good places for me to apply tension? First of all, my pinkies down here to pull the gun downwards and my strength in my uh, pointer finger on my support hand and my middle finger on my gun hand help trap the gun at a base level right here. So I have strength here I have strength up here with my thumb or with my uh, my yeah my thumb from my support hand pulling down I have strength here squeezing creating tension here and I also have my pinkies pulling the gun downward as well so when that happens and the gun goes off you are managing the recoil of that gun so that it stays flat and even instead of going up out like this or going out of control because you have weak points in your grip right so that's the proper way to hold a pistol high on the beaver tail wrap fingers around keep your trigger finger high because we're doing trigger discipline here this is a safety thing so you keep it up here for now at least support hand I'm gonna shake your hand fits right in with the knuckles of my shooting hand wrap around I have tension here, I have tension here pulling down, and I have tension here with my thumb. Thumbs forward, tension here, present. Now I'm locked into place and the only place for all that pressure to go is to zip this slide back and forth. That's it, right? So that is a proper pistol grip and that's the most modern grip that you'll find out there right now. Um, and it's evolved a lot over the years to hit this point. Okay, so this is like the most, I guess, advanced, if you want to call it that, um, grip that's been available for a long time. So that, that's how you grip a pistol, okay? So the next thing is that I hear a lot about is stance. How do you stand whenever you're shooting? Well, 
um, a lot of times what I tell people is, if I were to challenge you to a fist fight, if I were to challenge you to a fist fight right now, where we'd square off and we'd box, how would you stand? You'd probably, you wouldn't get in a full bladed stance, but you would probably, instead of standing with my feet parallel this way, I would probably shift my weight to my rear foot just a little bit as if I'm about to box, right? And what's that do naturally? Naturally, that's a, that's a natural quote unquote fighting stance. And the reason why it's your body does that naturally is so that you put weight, you distribute your weight to be able to uh, withstand pressure coming from the front. So if somebody pushes you or shoves you or punches you in the face, well, I have my weight distributed in a way where I'm not gonna fall on my ass, right? I'm not gonna fall backwards and get tackled and whatever else. I'm gonna be able to withstand that resistance that's coming at me, right? So that's, that's a natural stance that your body will get into whenever you are presented with a threat unexpectedly. Your body is going to transition into this quote unquote fighting stance um, without you even realizing that you're do gonna do it. So I say that if that's the case, if my body's gonna naturally do that, um, I would prefer for that to be my shooting stance. And not only is it natural to where you're gonna do it without thinking about it, but it's also a pretty good way to manage recoil because your weight is already distributed in a way where forces pushing back on you are gonna be resisted by your own weight distribution. So whether you're getting punched in the face or you're getting shoved or whatever, or you're shooting a gun and the recoil is pushing you backwards, you still have the strength and the distributed weight to be able to manage and resist that pressure. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I say. I said, how do you stand? I don't know. Get in a fighting stance like we're about to box. All right, let's box. Now put a gun in your hands, right? That's what I tell people. So that's... If you're thinking about stance, you're thinking about, you know, do I do this or do I do this or do I, how do I, you know, whatever I do, just stop, think about it, just relax, say, okay, let's box. Okay, now put a gun in your hands. That's your quote unquote shooting stance, right? That's how you do it. So that's stance. Now, the next thing is trigger control. The biggest thing, well, I would say probably the biggest reason why you're missing shots if you're missing shots is because of your grip the second biggest reason is because of your trigger control now this is a clear gun no bullets in it right so trigger control is basically understanding the mechanics of your trigger if you have a modern striker fire pistol like a glock or a this is a cz if you have an m &P, if you have a Springfield, whatever the case may be, if it's a polymer frame, like a plastic frame and a steel slide, then what you usually have is you have a mechanical trigger that is quote unquote striker fired. So with all those triggers, what you end up with is if I pull this trigger back, there is slack in this trigger, right? I can feel all this slack right here, but whenever I push all the way through the slack, it stops and I feel resistance right there. And if I push past it, I break my shot, right? The gun goes off, the slide cycles, the trigger resets. And then if I, e if I keep my trigger finger all the way to the wall of the rear and I ease forward, I'll feel it click back in place. That is called trigger reset. So. What usually happens when people are missing shots is they're coming all the way out of their trigger, letting all of this slack come all the way out of their trigger, and then they're slapping the trigger like that. Now, if you didn't notice that the first time, I'll do it again. Now watch the muzzle of my gun when I do that. You see how it moves? Well, in a pistol, now keep in mind, handguns are the hardest firearm ever to be able to master and shoot accurately. Rifles are totally different, but pistols, handguns, are very difficult to be accurate with. And the reason why is because for every, so the target that I have down range is at seven yards, okay? At 10 yards, 
they've done the math on this, at 10 yards, for every one eighth of an inch that this barrel moves, it translates to four inches at your target, at 10 yards, okay? If it's 25 yards, think of how much further that is. But at 10 yards, it's four inches for every eighth of an inch that you move this barrel. So if I'm sitting here slapping this trigger and jerking this trigger and the barrel is moving right before the gun goes off, for every eighth of an inch that it moves, I'm gonna be four inches off on my target. So that's why it's so difficult to manage handguns and to be able to shoot them accurately because there's very little, um, uh, what's the word that I'm thinking of? Tolerance. There's very little tolerance for mistake for for your screw up on your end. So in order to mitigate that, in order to make sure that you try to always have a smooth, crisp, clean. Um, trigger press without jerking it without throwing your shot one way or the other is you proper or you uh, practice proper uh, trigger discipline well trigger prep it's called trigger prep when you take all the slack out of your trigger and you rest at that breaking point now this takes practice for you to be able to like you know subconsciously intuitively do this but once you take all the slack out of your trigger, then the only movement that's required is to push past that breaking point. Rather than coming all the way out of the trigger and slapping it, you have a lot more chance of jerking it and pulling and pushing one way or the other. So proper trigger prep is huge. Also, after you shoot the gun, break your shot, gun cycles, you need to practice learning where your reset is so that you can stay riding on that breaking point rather than coming all the way out and pushing past it and again jerking your shot you have to learn where that breaking point is and how to really surf and ride that breaking point um so trigger control trigger prep trigger reset and trigger discipline having the wherewithal to do that instead of just throwing the gun out there and slapping your trigger you're gonna throw your shot way off so just having the wherewithal to do all of that that's called trigger discipline of trigger prep and trigger reset so that's your trigger now a lot of people that I've talked to say oh well I'm shooting low into the left or I'm shooting high into the right or whatever the case may be so how much finger do I put on the trigger well um, think of it this way so if we know that moving the barrel of this gun, moving the muzzle an eighth of an inch throws my shot off that much, your trigger finger, how much finger you put in this trigger guard on the trigger is pretty important. And the reason why, usually what I get is people say they're shooting low into the left, right? They're shooting and it's low into the left. And the reason why is because, well, number one, the reason why it's low is because you're anticipating the shot. And we'll get into that later. But the reason why it's to the left is because you don't have enough finger on the trigger. And what you're doing is you're putting just the tip of your finger on the trigger. And as you pull that, you're actually pushing the gun this way. Versus if you're shooting to the right, you have too much finger on the trigger. And you're actually pulling the gun this way. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm shooting to the left, I don't have enough trigger, none, enough finger on the trigger, and I'm actually pushing the gun a little bit this way as I'm pulling the trigger. If I'm shooting to the right, I got too much, and I'm pulling the gun this way as I pull the trigger, right? Now, anticipating the shot. This is a big problem, and this is the thing that usually most new shooters, I still do it to this day, I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds through handguns, and I still do it to this day. So it's something that you have to practice regularly in order to get over so that you can be extremely accurate versus just, you know, at 10 yards, can I shoot a paper plate size target and I'm good, right? Well, if you want to really tune that in to where you can shoot a quarter at 10 yards consistently, um, you have to manage your own physiological response that creates 
an anticipation of the shot. Best way that I can describe this is, is if I put, if I put a loaded magazine in the gun. Actually, I'll do it for you right now. Put your pro on. Sorry if I talk weird. My uh, electronic hearing is out of batteries right now, so I can't hear. So I might talk a little bit louder. But if I put a loaded magazine in the gun, right? Rack the slide. Now, I'm going to take this magazine out of the gun. So all I have is one bullet in the chamber, and that's it, right? So, present, squeeze the trigger. Boom, right? Gun cycles. Now, empty gun. What I see every single time is after that explosion goes off, I see this. You jerk the trigger. You give it a little nosedive. That is a natural physiological response. When an explosion goes off in your hands, your body's like, holy crap, this is like scary, right? So then the next time you know you're about to pull that trigger again, your body preps for it and it like it it wants to resist against it as it's happening. And when you do that, you create a nosedive of the pistol. Clear gun. When you go to shoot, you jerk it, and it's a nosedive of the muzzle, and that's why you're shooting low. You're not shooting exactly flat where you want to go. You're shooting low, right? So to mitigate that, my best drill that I've been able to show people and that I do myself regularly is exactly what I just showed you. Put a magazine in the gun, load one bullet in the chamber, take the magazine out, put it on the table, present, shoot, reset the trigger, click, right, and then I shoot again. Now, if I can get myself If I can get myself to shoot the gun, feel the recoil, my body responds to it, and then that second shot, there's not a bullet in the chamber, and I can squeeze that trigger and break the shot flat and even and still without jerking it, that's what you want to try to do every time you practice, is make sure that your follow-up shots are clean, level, flat, easy instead of, you know, loading a magazine, putting one in the chamber, I don't want my ear pro on, but I don't care, shooting, and then doing this. You see what I'm saying? If you try that at the range, I guarantee you, you'll shoot, and then that next shot will be one of those. So that's something that you have to practice, and you have to train your body to realize that when this gun goes off, it's not a big deal, it's not anything to be alarmed about, and to stay calm and focused on your follow-up shots as you shoot so that you're not sitting there, you know, trying to jerk it around, trying to like, because your body is scared, basically, of the explosion that just went off in your face. That's shot anticipation. If you're shooting low, nine times out of ten, it's because you anticipated the shot. If you were to film yourself in slow-mo, you would see your muzzle go, like this right as the shot is taking place and that bullet's gonna go down you're gonna, you're gonna nose dive your pistol you're gonna shoot low now the last thing that I'm gonna leave you with um, is I have had people talk about shooting high they said I don't understand I'm shooting and my gun I just I can't I can't help it but when I shoot I'm shooting high and I asked those people what are you shooting what kind of pistol are you shooting they said Glock Okay, so all of you people out there who have a Glock, there's something you need to know. The grip of this pistol, the way it is, this is called the cant. The angle of the grip as opposed to the slide. The slide is always flat and level, but the angle of the grip changes based on what model, what brand of pistol you have, right? Glocks tend to cant back further like this 
than normal pistols do. So, as a result, if I hold a Glock pistol, I don't have one with me right now, but if I hold a Glock pistol the same way that I would hold a 1911 pistol or even this pistol, hold it like this straight up, I have extra grip down here that forces this gun to push out. So my muzzle is actually higher than if I'm holding a gun that doesn't have that extra cant right there. You see what I'm saying? So when they're shooting, they're shooting like this. I'm exaggerating right now, but they're shooting probably about like that. And when I look down my sight picture, I can see that my front sight is a lot higher than my rear sight. That's what's happening. When you're shooting high and you have a Glock, it's because of the cant of your pistol. You can't hold it like a normal, you know, straight up and down or very, very little cant pistol. You have to hold it to compensate for that long cant of a Glock. Now, Glocks are made to have a grip that is very far forward. So it's, it's, it's kind of a different grip. It's very similar, but it's a little bit different where you have to stay high on the gun, grip the gun, and you have to almost twist your elbow, your forearm. So a normal grip would be like this, right? Whereas a Glock would be like this. And the difference is you're compensating for that extra cant on the butt end of that gun. Does that make sense? So if you're shooting high, you need to adjust your grip and make sure that your sight picture does not show your front sight higher than your rear sight. You need to put that front dot in the bucket and make sure that it is flat and level across the top, which obviously leads me to sight picture. Now, obviously, sight picture is, everybody knows what a good sight picture is, and if you don't, basically what it is, is the front sight, the front sight post, if you look down your gun, now this gun does not have a rear sight on it, and that's because I have a red dot right here. Instead, it has this little thing right here that tells me when my front sight is right in between my, basically, the middle of the gun, right? So it, this this pistol is a little bit, little bit different than probably what you're used to, but what you're used to is a front sight post and a rear sight post. Now what you want is, you want when you look down the gun, you want your front sight to be completely flat across the top of your rear sight. You don't want it deeper, lower, you don't want it higher, you want it completely flat across the top, right? So if, if you're a Glock person and you're shooting, and you're shooting too high because you have the wrong grip and it's not canting the gun the way it needs to be, you need to get higher up on the gun up here in this beaver tail and you need to use your support hand to really lock that gun into place and compensate for that extra cant on the back of the lockers. So that's just my recommendation there. I, I, um, anybody who's a Glock person who's shooting high, if that doesn't help you, let me know and maybe we can go out and shoot sometime and I can show you kind of what you're doing wrong. But um, there's a lot of other factors that might take into place there, but I won't be able to really tell what you're doing until I actually watch you shoot. Um, but I, I can probably guarantee that it has to do with your grip. That's the biggest thing on Glock pistols is that cant is compensating for that and adjusting to that grip angle. So, um, so yeah, that's basically the very basic fundamentals of shooting. That's how you grip a pistol. It's how you properly pull the trigger. And use good trigger discipline for your um, your trigger prep and your trigger reset. Uh, that's proper side alignment. That's proper stance, right? The only other thing that I can show you is presentation, and this is important because it helps you manage recoil a little bit better. Um, a lot of people will tell you to just lock your arms out as strong as you can, and I I disagree. I, I tend to disagree because I used to do that a lot. And I used to be like, well, my shots really aren't consistent. Like I don't, you know, I know where I want the bullet to go. Um, and even when I shoot, I don't necessarily have a consistent group one way or the other. It's just a bunch of bullet holes in a paper plate sized target just kind of all over the place, right? 
Well, what I figured out that I was doing wrong is instead of gripping this and shoving that gun way out there and using all of my strength to do that, instead, I need to chill out, relax, and allow for some suspension in my elbows so that gun can work naturally on its own. You want the gun, you want to just let the gun go off. You don't want to make the gun go off. The more you intervene, the more chances you have of screwing up your shot. The gun's going to do what it's supposed to do. You are the problem, not the gun. You see what I'm saying? So the more muscle and the more you try to manhandle this thing and really like force it to do what you want to do, the more you are going to screw up and, and cause a problem. So you need to relax, allow for some suspension and movement in this gun, present the gun out, just push the gun out, make sure you have all your grip, all of your tension points covered in your grip, and let that gun go off. And when it does, you're going to allow it to do what it needs to do, rather than forcing it and jerking the trigger or not having enough dexterity in your finger because you're gripping the gun so hard or whatever the case may be just relax and let the gun go off so your presentation should be straight out but not locked out but almost locked out just enough to create a little bit of suspension there and it really what ends up happening whenever you do that whenever you allow for a little bit of suspension you change the amount of pressure that's put on this side of the gun and you turn it into pressure that's put on this side of the gun and this is more important for managing recoil and for keeping a steady shot than this is this is definitely more important so instead of pushing out where I'm gripping everything and I'm putting all this tension on the front and back of my grip instead I'm gonna give a little bit of tension and I'm gonna squeeze inward inward and inward on the gun while I have this little bit of suspension and it helps me manage that recoil and it helps me control that gun a little bit better and when it goes off it's more of like a flow rather than sticking out and just going wherever it wants to go you know what I'm saying so um, that's my recommendations for presentation is to present the gun but have a little bit of play in there so that the gun can work and do what it needs to do and I can keep tension on this part of the gun rather than this part of the gun. Does it make sense? So, next time you're at the range, try that out, see what you think. And I know this is like impossible to watch a video and like replicate everything I'm trying to tell you, um, but I don't know. It's worth a shot. I'm trying. I hope it helps a little bit, at least. Um, and if it doesn't, let me know, and I will try to answer your questions. Or um, maybe I can set up a time where we can meet and we can both shoot together, and I can kind of tune you in and correct all the little things that you may not realize that you're doing um, that are actually affecting the outcome. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, hope that helps. And y'all stay safe and wash your hands. <laughs> Deuces.